Et elle a fait le casse moi elle Ok guys Yes, elle a fait le casse moi Elle a fait le casse Hindi, but I want to speak in English today with you. And um, firstly, I want to start saying that thank you for inviting me. I'm going to thank Pandit and Dr. Anshul for making me a part of uh, Indie Bar. You know, 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 you and why have we ignored it for so long? Maybe it has been around in other words and other jargon has been used. But I think it was very relevant for her to write something and, you know, talk to the generation of today something that is so important in our lives. Even more so because the generation today, which most of you are Gen Zs, and the next generation that is coming is Generation Alpha, I think they understand the importance of this even more. So the corporate culture, if they want to kind of embrace you or want to, you know, hire you, they will need to understand that the Gen Z is a generation and the Gen Alpha, that is the next generation to come, are very inclined towards the spiritual work. I think of the old souls being reborn. So in a way, you know much more. At the same time, we can teach you a few things that probably you may not know at this very onset of life. So today's talk is basically to talk about spirituality at work, to talk about the book. And uh, I'm going to talk to you about certain things and certain anecdotes from my personal life. Most of you know me as a choreographer, know me as a dancer, know me as a judge. But I, do, I used to run a company which I have now, you know, dissolved it only in last year, 2023, October. So we completed 25 years, so I know what it is to run a company. It may not be at the corporate level, but whether it's a small company, which had 60 dancers and employees and you know supporting staff, or you run a company which has 600 people, it doesn't matter. The amount of responsibility, the amount of work that goes into running a company is the same. So certain things I'm gonna to talk to you from a very personal experience, which is connected with me with the book, and I'm going to also let you know that there are certain things that are going to be purely driven by human beings and choices we make. So let's come back to the very important topic, spirituality at work. Why is spirituality at work so important? I think one of, one of the very amazing gurus, Sadhguru, had once in his talk said something. If you are going to spend a good and large amount of your waking life, at work, it better be a beautiful place to work. Don't count when you're sleeping at home. That is not productive. That is productive for the body. Your body is healing from all the stress of life. But you are not awake that time. You are not connecting to your family. You are in your la la land, right? So the out of the 24 hours, if 6 to 8 hours has gone to work, do the math, 16. 8 to 10 hours work, 1 hour of traveling, so 12 hours again. So you really have maximum amount of time of waking life you are spending at work. Are we all agreeing on this? Yes. If I am going to work continuously within one organization, another organization, doesn't matter. I am working 10 to 12 hours and 2 hours in travel or whatever it is. That means a considerable amount of my youth and my you know, middle age is gone into my work culture. And if I don't look into that aspect of my life and see meaning, purpose, I will be living a very, very a life no. Um, living dead. You are living but you are dead inside. So it is so important that what Dr. Anshul has written about this book is so important and relevant because I know a generation that has gone by and that says, I don't care. And we have worked like donkeys. Okay? And that must probably be your dad, granddad. You know, that time it was more of survival. Ki survive karna hai. But today's generation is not about survival. 
I'm not talking about again the poorest of the poor person who will not look at meaning in life and purpose in life. You can't give him a lecture on meaning and purpose for a man who is struggling to make two ends meet. But we are catering this conversation. Of course, there also that person can have meaning in life. His meaning in life is to provide for his children. He doesn't care too much what the work is all about. And therefore, he'll take on whatever it is. And he will be able to deal with it. But many of us may not live in a survival mode. Many of us want to thrive, don't want to survive. Are we all in agreement with this? We're not survival mode. It's not like we don't know what we're going to eat tomorrow, or where we're going to live, or where we're going to live, or where we're going to live. So we're not in survival mode. So this conversation cannot be for people who are in survival mode. This conversation will fall on deaf ears to survival mode people. We're looking at you who are not in survival. You are here to thrive, to grow. So whatever we say has a disclaimer, not for people in survival mode. Are we clear? Because maha par ye baat nahi chalne wali. Ye spiritual baatein nahi chalegi. That will be require another kind of spirituality. Yeah? Clear on this? So, coming back to the fact that if 10 hours of my work is going to go into being at the corporate or the workspace, then I want to live, I want my work to be a second home. Now, assuming your home is a lovely place where you have a good relationship with your mother and father, then you want a second home. But if your home only is a problem area, then you want to run away from that home. At least, calm me, mujhe kuch to sukoon mile, correct? So, I'm again going to say a disclaimer, not everybody's houses are perfect. I cannot assume that. But assuming that the house is a safe place, jane pe jane log hai, you know, but sometimes they can also be chaotic. The very people you live in, usme zyada friction hoti 